Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome back here to another update. Uh, Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. It's about 11.51 a.m. California time. Live stream is back up and running. <clears throat> it looks like some type of software issue here on my end uh, about an hour or so ago. But uh, live stream is up and running. And uh, it's a beautiful day. Sun shining out here in California. Not too bad. About 56 degrees. The latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a uh, 2.9 across the uh, Nepal area, looks like, coming in. Also 4.2 uh, into the area uh, outside Turkey, it looks like. Going to cover uh, Hawaii activity first here. Getting a little bit of movement across the Kilauea Volcano area, the crater area, up here around where the lava lake is. Very shallow earthquake activity. Uh, so I'm not for certain if this is going to be subsidence of the uh, the general lava lake out here, which is virtually uh, or technically uh, all older lava. Um, there is no update yet from the hazard notification system in regards to Kilauea Volcano. Um, refresh that just to double check. No update as of yet. So they must be coming in a little bit late Uh tilt meter out here across the summit region continues to inflate here's the last two days of data showing that uh, gradual inflation here doesn't look like much on the two day but if we look at the past 30 days here or so it's been going up and up and up and if we go back all the way till uh, September or so when the last eruption occurred there in 2023 you'll see that each uh, inflation period here was followed up by a higher step up of inflation in those days leading up to today so we're still currently up there about the highest level since 2018 since the 2018 eruption there at Kilauea volcano we'll continue to watch that and report back on any changes that take place uh, across that area that image is not going to work uh, let's see what this one looks like just want to get a little view of the lava lake area still looks like uh, there's some cloud cover and whatnot here in the uh, in the distance Looks a little chilly up there. Of course, volcanic gases and heat and whatnot are going to look a little bit more dramatic in the colder weather. As uh, far as Iceland activity goes, I um, was checking that out just now. Uh, really not seeing any huge uptick in terms of earthquake activity here. Uh, let me make sure I got my uh, bells off, which I do. Uh, the region of interest, of course, has been uh, right now around the Grindavik area. Uh, getting a little bit of uh, earthquake activity outside of our magma intrusion zone uh, a little bit further up north so that's kind of interesting here we're still looking at uh, elevated inflation activity across this region of the savart singhi area and around the area of uh, last month's fisher activity which is roughly right about in here uh, no major changes down here across the greendevik area in terms of earthquake activity uh, the latest um tilt meter let me see what where did i put that at right here i got so many tilt meters and uh pages here God, it's hard to keep track of them here's a vertical displacement there around the savart singhi area right here uh as you can see since the 2000 um 2023 eruption back on december 18th or so we've gone uh We've gone back up in terms of inflation activity as you can see listed up here on the chart on the graph uh, to where we're at today we're above the level of uh, inflation that happened prior to the uh, eruption back in december so kind of a waiting game um see what else we got here across the area in terms of earthquake activity here's the last 24 hours of activity goodness where's everything happening at we got any uh major stuff out here doesn't look like anything major overnight we did see some deeper movement here into the tonga trench 4.6 that's going to be this earthquake right here uh almost down there at about 500 kilometers or so below the surface for that earthquake uh definitely not of any concern um but it has been uh, relatively quiet over here and it, since last night's update things are still very quiet in terms of anything of um larger magnitude new zealand down here seen a 3.2 uh, last night outside of the christchurch area 
was felt uh, over the region. It doesn't look like too much has showed up here since then. Uh, maybe some deeper activity up along the Kermadec Trench. And uh, there is that deeper activity into Tonga. So, um, looks like today a lot of the activity is stretched across the northern edge here of the Pacific Plate. And um, not so much down south. So, Japan looks like a little bit of activity in the Kuro Kamachaka Trench as well. Uh, not really showing up here across the USGS map. Even though it looks like there's a couple fours in here. Let me refresh this, double check, I'm pretty certain. Um, yeah, that's odd. Not reporting any of the four pointers out there today. Uh, in terms of uh, the Japan area, but it looks like there is, according to the uh, EMSC model here on the Earthquake 3D globe. So uptick here across the Aleutian Trench as well. Um, the area out here across the Middle East region we did have a 4.4 that was from yesterday afternoon northern turkey but there's uh there's some further movement coming in here it looks like it's around the maybe iraq area northern iraq somewhere around here uh for that four pointer currently coming in I'm not for sure what's going on with usgs today i don't know if they lost their uh system as far as reporting international quakes or not but it looks like they're missing a few quakes out here and uh, let's see what else we got. South America still seeing quite a few threes, although not quite as clustered down here today uh, in that area of the Peru Chile Trench. A lot of older movement here from yesterday across the Middle America Trench, and not a whole lot across the Atlantic. Uh, there's some of that activity stirring up in the Iceland area. Uh, let's see here what we got uh, for the uh, area. Felt earthquake in Turkey, that's going to be that 4.2. But it looks like there was a uh, 3.7 earlier this morning. Also 2.8 out there. Where did where did that go in the uh, in the graph? At least in the Iceland chart. Let me check here real quick and see. Has that been over 12 hours? There's a 2.2. That was over here across this area uh, outside the Green Devic area. A little bit separate swarming here across this rift zone. Uh, but really nothing major. So yeah, definitely uh, just kind of uh, watching activity here today. Let's get into the states and see if anything's going on out here across the west coast of uh, California. Uh, a little bit of spotty activity out here today nothing uh, major interest a look at the a look at the uh, 2.5 map and above shows uh really not a whole lot out here a couple earthquakes there from yesterday in the uh, walker area and also mine in nevada nothing across the pacific northwest in terms of anything above 2.5 uh, we do have some again scattered light earthquake activity here across the region of socal but uh, again this is all very typical no major clustering or swarming observed there across that region. Uh, into the Yellowstone area, looks like things have kind of tapered off, at least according there to the USGS. So we'll see what we got for the uh, uh, the official maps out here. This is put out today, right? January 10th. Updated information. Not really seeing a whole lot out here at all today. Uh, maybe a small amount of earthquake activity here across the borehole area, but uh, for the most part That uh, is super duper small and not a whole lot of earthquake activity of observed uh, in this area For the rest of the country as you can see very minimal not a whole lot showing up on the USGS map here uh, Let's check out the space weather activity because it looks like it's quiet in terms of uh, Plate dynamics right now a little odd 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 5% chance or so. Uh, looks like we're currently flaring into the C flare category, C 2.2 or so. And um, hard to say exactly which sunspot may be producing that C flare. Could be out here on the western limb, could be some activity out here on the eastern limb. 
uh, look at the magnetogram image here of the sun, earth facing side of the sun. Does show quite a few sunspots out here, but they are uh, uh, relatively stable for the most part. Looks like this region right here looks to amp looks uh, like it wants to amplify a little bit in terms of complexity. And of course this one over here appears to be growing, but that is just off the western limb right now. A couple newer sunspots coming around as well. Uh, but generally not a huge threat for solar flare activity at the current state of those sunspots. Uh, no major aurora forecast for the foreseeable future. Um, things are very minimal right now. We did have a, this was from yesterday here, neat little prominence eruption here. That was way out on the northeastern limb of the sun from yesterday. But really not expecting anything major in terms of uh, auroras for now. So we'll just kind of watch it, see how things play out. Storm Prediction Center here today, currently one outlook. California uh, and up into Oregon, maybe a potential of some thunderstorms. Our next severe weather event begins uh, tomorrow here on um, Thursday. It's already, th um, okay, today's Wednesday, almost, dang, almost Friday already, folks. A couple more days. Uh, tornado threat tomorrow there on Thursday, along with some wind and hail threats. A lot of moisture has been coming up here from the south. Um, and that's generally due to the El Nino pattern that uh, is in place. Pulling in a lot of uh, moisture there. Creating some of these uh, severe weather potential days out here. So a big time threat looks like, well not big time, but we do have a 5% zone out here. So that's kind of important to pay attention for the weather tomorrow. The next day here, day 3, looks to be a little bit more enhanced. Notice that enhanced zone out here across uh, some areas that just seen some severe weather out there a couple days ago. Uh, and that could include the potential there for some tornadoes as well. We'll check that out uh, probably tomorrow. But either way, severe weather threat out here. And um, out across the southeast as we head into Friday. Here's our current system out here across the uh, area. I got clear skies, maybe a couple of high thin cirrus clouds out here. Unfortunately, these storm systems that come down from the north or northwest are cold, but limited on the moisture content out here across the lowland area of California here in the valleys. But the snow level, the snow does pick up in the higher elevations. We just don't get a lot of rain at the, uh, the valley levels. That looks like it's going to be the case as well. Uh, for this weekend now the coast range here gonna get quite a bit around Crescent City and Eureka Maybe Fort Bragg in there as well, but the valley is going to be limited out here uh, There is that severe weather maker another low pressure system there as we head into Thursday and into Friday More snow wrapping back around that low pressure and then we get uh, a pretty big drop of cold air into the uh, Southern Plains area look at that a lot of colder air snow potential as well Potentially uh, some pipe busting cold frigid air coming in there After that Well Looks like that low pressure or at least the jet stream here is going to continue to dip down some colder air I know where that jet stream is coming from that means that California would uh, remain dry Which looks to be the case look at this moisture coming up straight from the south here into Texas as we head towards the end of January that uh, it's pretty neat to see, but still California. I uh, don't know what's going on. It was looking promising here in terms of uh, storm potential and rainfall accumulation out here, but uh, for now, it looks like the pattern wants to keep the West Coast dry, and that's not good. January is actually one of our wetter months of the year, and so far. Um, I don't think we picked up anything. I think so far we've only picked up maybe a tenth of an inch of rain. And that is not good. So we'll continue to watch this and see uh, hopefully the patterns change out here as we head into February and March. Uh, seismograph stations out here. A little spike of an earthquake there across Mount St. Helens. 
Uh, but aside from that, things look uh, fairly quiet for now on the uh, majority of the graphs. So a little quiet, um, at least on the USGS map. EMSC as well, except for some of these smaller quakes. We'll uh, catch you guys back here a little bit later on, folks. Got somewhat of a busy day today. Um, I got my uh, spring classes coming back up again. I've been enjoying a little bit of time off from uh, the classes here that... Uh, that I go to here at the uh, the college here in Northern California. I'm uh, going to study up more on some geology and uh, geog geography of California stuff and a whole bunch of other classes I took in there. So I'm getting busy. going to be pretty busy here as we head into the spring uh, classes, which starts, oh, shortly. In about a week or so. No, a little bit over a week, 10 days or so, somewhere around there. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good day. We'll catch you guys back here uh, later on this evening. Again, live stream is up and running. Had some type of weird uh, software failure on this end. Not for sure what the uh, culprit was, but uh, uh, something had an issue. All right, guys, we'll catch you back here a little bit later on. Take care. Enjoy this Wednesday.